Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Italian Vegan. Um, before we start, can you just uh, can I just confirm that you can hear me loud and clear, and that uh, you can see me? You can see me, okay. Deborah from um, Texas says hello. Fantastic. Good morning, Deborah. Um, just just want to yes, just to make sure that um, I'm coming coming across loud and clear. Yeah, can um, hear you, Deborah <laughs> says, and see you. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. For those of you, I noticed that there's a couple of new names. For those of you that are, are, are new to these uh, to these cooking shows, uh, this is obviously it's a Zoom event. At the moment, you're all uh, muted, uh, but if you want to intervene, you want to ask me questions while I'm cooking, uh, please feel free to interrupt me and uh, and just either ask it out loud uh, by first unmuting uh, yourself, which you do by um, tapping on your uh, on your image and then uh, and then tapping the microphone button to mute or unmute yourself and then I can answer you live. Or if you prefer, you can type it in the chat box and then uh, Katerina will, uh, will read it out to me and I will answer that way. Okay, Sue um, hears you fine. And Catherine says, hello from snowy Chipping Norton. Oh, fantastic. It's nice to see some snow in January, the right season. Um, okay, so um, first of all, also, also before going into the cooking, I want to thank you, thank again, those of you that contributed to uh, um, uh, by buying a ticket, a ticket for good. Uh, all the money for that goes to uh, buy one, uh, uh, give one. And um, today, uh, the money that we uh, we raised, we give giving to um, uh, uh, helping to maintain um, uh, water pumps in schools, schools in Tan Tanzania. Um, so that um, because there are many schools that uh, are the only the only water supplies is a, like a hand water pump, and if that doesn't work, it makes it really difficult to uh, to teach uh, to teach a, 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 a big group of children that cannot even even drink some fresh water. So um, it's great that by doing this, we can help people all over the world and uh, and bring a smile to somebody in a, in a place. For those it's that less don't, fortunate than us. Just yeah. say for those that don't know, hundred percent goes to the charity. Yes, uh, the the, one, the good thing about buy one give one is that all the admin all the admin costs are, are paid by our membership. Um, so any money that is raised uh, goes hundred percent towards the impacts that we choose. Um, so this this money that we raise today goes completely into maintaining those water pumps. And nothing goes nothing gets lost in the process to people who raise the money uh, or uh, the the admin the admin of the charity itself. Okay, so um, let's go into today's um, today's dishes. Uh, today we're doing like a, a traditional Spanish dishes with a little bit of an Italian twist to it. So the tortilla de patatas, which is basically like a potato omelet um, that you often find in the in the you know Spanish restaurants as a tapas, you know, cut in little in little squares uh, or in in small slices. Um, and we're also cooking some asparagus in um, cooked in the pan with a little bit of white wine. Uh, absolutely very simple, but very really really nice and and, and delicious. Um, so um, I will talk you through the ingredients first of all. Well, there are very very few ingredients today. Um, so let me actually get out the olive oil that we will need. So obviously we will need some uh, some good quality olive oil. Um, also about two or three, if you've got big potatoes, a couple are enough for or three, uh, three medium ones. There's some fresh rosemary. Um, an onion, a good size one, as it looks. Uh, we need some fresh, sorry, some fresh, some uh, sun-dried tomatoes as well to add a little bit of flavor. And also um, a little bit of uh, vegan parmesan. This is this is the one I'm using, which is a Prosciano BioLife BioLife Prosciano, which is the, the best I've found so far. At least of the ones that are available um, are available easily from the supermarkets. And I only need we only need a little bit. So this is how much I'll be using today. So um, I don't know how much it weighs. Probably be about thirty grams. Okay. So this is the um, the ingredients for the first dish. The only the only thing the thing that we normally would use um, that we use would be flour and eggs. But obviously this is a vegan class, so we won't be using um, eggs. But we'll be using um, this is a chickpea flour. You can see. 
We're going to check the flour and, and water. Okay, so uh, without further ado, let's go into um, let's go into preparing this dish. Now, what can you use instead of chickpea flour? That's a, a question from Catherine. Okay, we normally use chickpea flour because it's like as a, as a vegan as well. It's got a lot of protein, uh, but you can use um, you can use bread flour if you know if you got that instead. Um, <laughs> it's it's anything else so basically that will bind together that will bind together the uh, the potatoes once they're cooked. Okay, so uh, first of all. Um, as I said, I, I, you would have noticed by the email that I sent out uh, this morning that um, uh, what I'm doing now, I'm giving you a little, a little thing, some, a few little things to do if you, um, if you want to prepare beforehand, because I've been told by a few people that sometimes I go too fast and it's difficult to, to watch the video and, um, and do the different cooking tasks at the same time. So. If you if you just want to follow the video and have everything ready uh, by the side, then you can do the things that I tell you in the email. Um, otherwise, you can just do it with me as I go along right now. So this morning I told you to peel the potatoes um, and and cut them in in cubes, not too small, not too big. And this is what I'll be doing. I am doing right now. So. Let's do this first. Well done. Carol says we have some sleet and floods and now a few miles up the road expecting snow this afternoon. Well, oh, it must be very oh, cold wow. there. Oh wow, I know that it's um, up in the north there's, some, there's been quite a few problems with flooding. We, we've been lucky so far uh, down here, although it's been, you know, basically been raining non-stop the past, uh, for the past three days here, but um, at, at least it's been like, it's been light rain and, and he hasn't caused, he hasn't caused um, a lot of problems. Yeah, we're lucky uh, at least where we are. We, we're lucky as well to live on a hill. So, um, you know, we're not affected by, you know, affected by floods, but not even in the area there hasn't been much. Okay. No snow, but some horrible. Deborah's got a message. Deborah says no snow, but some horrible thunderstorms um, there currently. Ooh. I know it's the kind of kind of season where you get all um, like actually nature rebels for a few for a few weeks, and it makes us suffer. I think it's probably just to make us enjoy when the when the nice weather comes. Otherwise, we wouldn't really appreciate it, would we? if we didn't have any nice, horrible weather before. So this is, a, this is also a, one of those dishes that can be, um, you know, can be enjoyed um, hot, but it can also be enjoyed cold. And it's cold, you can, um, you can do your own little, little tapas and, uh, and serve it as a, um, as, a, as, a little, as a little starter as well. Catherine said that she made the red chicory risotto last Sunday and it was delicious. Oh, fantastic, Catherine. Nice to hear. Nice to hear. I know that I didn't manage to, um, or Sue, it wasn't, it's not too much in love with chicory. So she didn't, I didn't quite manage to convince her to, um, to like the radicchio itself. But I think I, what, I, what I liked about that dish that we did last week is the combination between uh, bitter and sweet. So obviously the, the radicchio is a, is, a, is a little bit bitter and the caramelized onions are sweet. So um, it's nice to, it's nice as a combination. I'm not normally a lover of sweet and sour, um, but I do like, I do like that dish quite, it's quite nice. She also said that uh, that was on Sunday and uh, on Saturday, they made the penny with smoked tofu and they enjoyed that too. And they say, thank you. Oh, wow. So I am, I'm actually in your mind the whole time, the whole weekend. <laughs> That's excellent, I like to hear that. We're just admitting Valerie. Um, okay, fantastic. I might want to go through the ingredients. Catherine says you're inspiring her, which is lovely. Thank you. Um, 
Thank you. So, good morning, Valerie. Uh, just just wanted to uh, welcome you to the group. I'm not I'm not quite sure. I'm not sure if you've been to one of these before. Uh, we just started, so you haven't uh, you haven't missed much yet. At the moment, what I have done so far, I've just peeled my potatoes and I started to chop them into uh, little squares, little chunks. Okay, Carol says that the town of Shrewsbury always floods um, because when the river uh, Severn flows through, it gets filled with all the Welsh rain. Oh, nice. <laughs> Lots of that. Yeah. It's one of your, hopefully it's not one of your exports. <laughs> We're going to keep it, in, keep it in Wales. Thank you. And Maria's also we got been... Enough, we got enough English rain here. And so Maria's also been cooking. She made the spinach and mushroom lasagna. That was delicious and she'll be making that again. I says thank you. Excellent. Excellent. I want to see some photos though, Maria. I need to see photos of this thing because it's kind of like, it gives me so much joy to see when, uh, when one of you cooks one of my dishes. I think it's, uh, it, makes it, all, it makes it all worthwhile for me. Um, and one thing that I've been wanting to cook, by the way, and I haven't managed to for lack of um, first, first hand material is uh, some, some nice artichoke dishes but it's kind of like artichokes are not easy to find here um but i might try next week when i go to the west end they got some uh, some old you know some posher um, um posher shops down there and I, I remember seeing them like walking past some nice artichokes so if i can find some i might um i might prepare one of my favorites which is uh, artichoke lasagna and um, and also um, fried fried artichokes, which is something that we always eat when um, you know um, it's kind of like almost like a party dish, Christmas, you know, special occasions. Um, they're always uh, they're always on the menu, and they're so delicious. Got a couple more messages. Sue says uh, that they've got raining whales in hay on Y two. And then Maria says that she has to work out how to put it on her Facebook because um, she's not technical. She says it's hit and miss with her. <laughs> That's okay, Maria. Just a, just a photo. So you just when you go on to uh, post, then there's a little icon with a, with a photo. You just click on that and upload your photo. And that's it. And then you write. And then you write your post as normal. When you come on Tuesday, I'll show you, Maria. Um, Catherine says we also struggle to get the artichoke. Yeah, no, it's a, the, the thing is, especially as um, I've grown up with the Roman artichokes, which are the small ones about that size, and they're very nice and tender. And even when we, we can find artichokes, normally we find the French ones, which are massive, they're about that size, and they are as hard as nails. And I end up, whenever I, whenever I buy any of those, I end up throwing away like three quarters of it because you only really eat the, the central part of it, and all the outside is just, just so hard. Um, that you can really use it apart from apart from if you're using if you're using it for soups, so that it's kind of like like you basically you boil it to death. Um, but um, the nice tender Roman ones are, are difficult to, to get hold of here in the UK. There's a question from Sue. She says, um, "Do you mean globe artichokes or Jerusalem artichokes?" No, no, I mean the, the globe artichokes, the normal ones, but there are different different varieties. And like I said, as I said, the French variety is very large. It's about, you know, the, the actual head is about this big. Where the, the, the ones that they, they, they grow in Rome are less than half the size, just small and really, really nice and tender. And you eat almost all of it, um, uh, as opposed to the, you know, the French ones where you throw away, you throw away a big part of it. Deborah's poor dog says one of her dogs has panic attacks during thunderstorms and she's had to give it some medicine just now to oh, calm it down. Poor yes. thing. I remember, I remember our dog in Italy used to always like run under the, the cabinets, you know, and trembling, <laughs> trembling and, and hiding as far away as he could. You know, it's uh, oh, it's normal. And, and I thought, and you know, obviously, you noticed who was that? They, they said that. Oh, so just, just my head somewhere else. Too. Yeah. Deborah, Deborah, Deborah. 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 I, I know the, the other thing that is uncanny is that the dogs know when a, when a storm is coming um, at least 15 minutes in advance and they start behaving. I don't know if you, you find the same with your dog, but our dog used to behave very strangely when um, just before thunderstorm started. And when, sometimes, 
funny, funnily, sometimes there wouldn't, there wouldn't, there wouldn't even be any clouds in the sky, and then they would all of a sudden, in the next fifteen minutes, they would just appear, and the dogs would be nowhere to be seen because obviously. It was okay, so I've done the um, the uh, potatoes. So we start doing that, and um, um, and and then the other things we need to do to prepare this dish, we need to slice the onion, and also cut. Um, cut the rosemary, okay? Just uh, uh, reduce it into, take it away from the, from the stems, like this, <clears throat> and, and take all the needles away from the woody, from the woody part, okay? And then we will, um, oh, we will cut it in bits. They were saying that her, her dog does sense it before. Yeah, they're, they're nice. They're such a, they, they are, they're incredible. Dogs are incredible animals. I mean, all animals are beautiful, but uh, I have a particular, particular love of dogs as a, uh, really I've grown up, I've grown up having, having dogs around me all the time. Okay, we've got um, Omotayo. Um, wait, I'm just admitting her. Chloe um, Omotayo. Hello, Chloe. Good morning and welcome to the Italian Vegan. Um, as I just repeat as a, what I said to the others, the ones that arrived a little bit late. We just started, so I haven't really started cooking yet. Um, if, if you are cooking along with me, the only thing I've done at the moment, I've taken three potatoes and uh, peeled them and um, cut, them into, cut them into small cubes, and they are ready to, to, go, to go on the pan. Uh, at the moment, I'm just getting the, the preparation done. So uh, apart from, the, from that, we cleaned one onion, which we'll, I will slice in a minute. And I am now um, um, got some fresh rosemary and removing the needles from the from the woody um, from the woody stem. Okay, and then I will chop it into smithereens as well. Okay, so we're almost done with this, and we can start the cooking in a second. Okay. And there is, a, there is actually, today it works quite well, as there is a little bit of cooking time where there, is, there isn't much to do when the potatoes are cooking. And so while that is happening, we'll be, um, we'll be going on with the, with the asparagus uh, at the same time. So um, I, I, I've, I've started doing this now, doing the preparation in front of you all, uh, all in one go, simply because some people said it was difficult to follow what I was doing. So, um, you know, you can do this bit with the ingredients and the, the information, the preparation I give you beforehand. So uh, you got more time to follow, to follow me as I cook um, and without having trouble between watching the videos, watching the video and, 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 uh, and cooking at the same time. Now, who's, uh, who's uh, actually attempting to cook today with me uh, live? Can I have a, can I have a quick, a quick poll to see if there's anybody um, is doing it with me or you just or you're just watching? It's okay either way. But it's nice to know if somebody's cooking so I can check on you and make sure that you are um, okay and following everything before Catherine I move on. And soon to say no, not today, they're watching. Okay. Maria's watching. Okay, now because if you're all watching, I can I can go ahead at my own pace. That's all the only reason why. I want to make sure if there's somebody that's cooking along with me, I can uh, I can then check on you and make sure that you are okay before I move on to the next step. Okay, so Sue's cooking, but she has no asparagus. Okay, um, well, you can do the potato the potato um, dish. Deborah's just watching, and Carol says she'll make it later in the week as she needs to get some asparagus. And okay. um, my father's very well. Thank you very much, Deborah, for asking. He's doing really well. Thank you. Okay, so we start the cooking now. Just so I just put some olive oil with the potatoes, possibly about I'll say about four tablespoons, three or four tablespoons, and we will start it on. I won't be using the, the bigger, the bigger hob. I'm using a medium one because we don't really want to um, fry these very much. It would just uh, it would it, it would almost be. Um, I'm not saying steaming them, or what you say when you're launching them. So, no, when, no, I don't know. I can't think of the word. I can't think of the word. No. Sealing them. No, we don't want cooking with their own their own steam. So at the moment we just uh, cook them quickly, uh, like this, 
in the in the pan for a few minutes. We don't need to do it. There's nothing going on at the moment. Um, while that is happening, I uh, will I uh, will deal with these other things. So I'll take a mandolin if you have them. It's easier when you want to get all the slices of the same size. And I will get some thick onion slices that way. I just just do a couple of slices and then I put my top on so I avoid slicing my fingers. There we are, nicely sliced on. I'll just cut these two little bits that are left here. Slice these as well. Okay, so I've got my onion ready. Let's stir it here. <coughs> okay, as you can, I don't know if you can hear the noise, but the, the potatoes are starting to, to gently sizzle. And make sure that I'm 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 using um, I'm using this pan just to show you why this one is bigger because I want the uh, the tortilla to come uh, quite high. Obviously, the bigger the pan, the flatter it's going to be. So I'm using a slightly smaller one. Okay, now I've only got my um, my rosemary to finally chop. You like all your gadgets? Yes, I got my kind of like all my toys. So. If you got a grinder, you know, an electric grinder, you can quickly grind them if you want. But sometimes they, they turn into a little bit of a paste when you do that, right? Then grind them small bits. So this is a, takes a little, a little bit longer, but it's more satisfying. some salt. We're roughly about one, one teaspoon of sea salt. And now I will add rosemary. Just let it go simply to get some of the fragrance. Nice, nice aroma, fresh rosemary. And I'll put my onion in as well. Uh, 
I will make sure I just work them in a little bit and then I just add a little bit of pepper in a second and then I will let them uh, stew pretty much on their own for, for about 10-15 minutes about 15 minutes I would say until they cook so just a little bit of black pepper Now I'll get the sorry. and now I'll cover and I'll leave them alone, turn the heat down a little bit, and last but not least, I am going to use some of my um, sun dried tomatoes. Is going last, so the, the, there is no need to there is no need to cook them really. So they just they would just add a little bit of flavour. Okay. Try to drain. I don't want all this oil. It's fine if you have a little bit, but I don't really want to have lots and lots of. There. Okay, I think this will be I'll take another one and that, that should be enough. Okay. So I'll just slice these as well. These are I mean these are extra ingredients that we made myself. You can you can do that, um, this dish, just simply if you want, just simply with potatoes. Um, I do like them with onions as well. And um, in this, I add a little bit of these um, sun-dried tomatoes and I use a little bit of parmesan just to, to, add, to add to the flavor of it a little bit. But the traditional, the traditional recipe is, um, Spanish traditional recipe simply with potatoes. So you can you can do it that way if you want. <laughs> the procedure is the same, so nothing changes much. Okay. Easy as well. Mm. Now, I will also, if you want to have an extra little bit of taste, um, you can also add a tiny little bit, like a couple of tablespoons of vinegar as well, and that would um, kind of like enhance the flavour. I'm not using it today. Or shall I or shall I? What do you think? I think it's very nice. Okay, let's, let's add some vinegar as well. <clears throat> a little kick. It wasn't part yet. You just give it a little bit. Actually, I didn't. I haven't included it on the ingredients. Um, but it's not necessary. If you don't have it, don't worry. Uh, you don't need to add it. But I just add about uh, three tablespoons of vinegar. What sort of vinegar are you using there? Is that white wine vinegar? Yes, it's white wine vinegar. I always use them. Um, oh, you always use this. Generally, um, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like what you know, isn't it? I've grown up with uh, with white wine vinegar, especially because the the um, the wine that they used to produce in my in my grandmother's um, um, area uh, near the village was absolutely undrinkable, <laughs> but it would make a really nice vinegar, and so we grown up using lots of it. We lost Deborah about five minutes ago because of internet oh. um, problems. So. She back in now? No. Oh, 
hopefully she'll be she's sorting out internet problems and the, the one thing that you can use vinegar for by the way and my grandmother used it pretty much for everything she also used it to wash the floors um, um, sometimes but you can use it to wash your vegetables so if you have um, a water mix have a, add some vinegar to your water when you wash your vegetables and that um, stops them apart from cleans them really well it stops them from um, uh, from uh, from oxidizing um, so it's good to um, good to keep them in water and vinegar Catherine says you can use it to clean windows as well yeah yeah you can use it for lots of things for also for, for um, um, this scaling this scaling your cut your kettle and um, and your washing machine to keep your washing machine clean so it's uh, it's good if you do a wash uh, a wash a wash of maximum temperature with um, with vinegar um, uh, in, in your washing machine once a month. Okay, so really good. Okay, now let me get a let me get a bowl and we prepare the um, um, the kind of the butter for the tortilla. Okay. So where did I put my thing? Okay. So I will add one glass of uh, chickpea flour. Again, is what I got that from my um, local health shop. Um. Ah, Deborah's waiting. She's coming in. Yeah. If you right, you too. Hey, welcome back, Deborah. I know that you have some problems with the internet, so she lost you when you were talking about the um, sun-dried tomatoes and um, and the vinegar. And what else did you put in the pepper? I think. Uh, yeah. So we added the sun-dried tomatoes. Now we're in with the um, with the potatoes. How many did and you add? Roughly? About five or six. Um, it's just a, it's just an extra ingredient simply because I do like this dish, but I do find it as well sometimes a bit bland. So I, I added a, a couple of bits, like the sun-dried tomatoes, a couple of, um, I put like two or three tablespoons of vinegar. And we will also, we add a little bit of uh, Parmesan cheese to the mix, just to give an extra, an extra little bit of kick to this dish. And she, I don't think you talked about uh, the chickpea flour. Um, so. um, I'll do, I haven't done anything with it yet, but I will yeah. do it next. Okay, so uh, I just put about one one glass of um, chickpea flour in the bowl, and I I use about the same amount of uh, tepid tepid water, and I mix it with a whisk. Are you putting warm water in there or, or cold? Um, yes, warm water. Warm water, please. And mix it with a whisk because otherwise it's easy to form, uh, um, what's it called? Oh, um, lumps. Lumps. So let's use a whisk to mix it well. And keep whisking until all the flour is combined and you've got a nice, no lumps. Okay, so we got that. Then what we will do is add a little bit of salt to the mix. Okay. Again, toast, uh, salt is to taste, so feel free to to actually give it a little taste to see if you want to if you want to order, uh, add a little bit more or not. I do. And also, the chickpea flour is a little bit sweet, so I want to make sure that it's seasoned correctly. Yeah, okay, that's fine. 
And the other thing I'm going to do now, I'm going to grate some um, Parmesan cheese into this. So again, this is all, I, all, I, all I'm using. Um, it, I don't really want to make it too cheesy because I don't want it to burn too much either. Um, so just a little bit of flavor. And I will grate this until I can grate no more. <laughs> because I always manage to um, to grate my fingers as well at the end. Okay, so that's it. Okay, give you another mix as well. Okay, and now let's go and have a look at the potatoes. You can see now that they are, we want to make sure that both the onions and the potatoes are nice and tender before we move on to the next step. First of all, make sure that they all get some cooking time <coughs> and cooking time on the bottom of the pan. Let's taste uh, the bigger bits to see. <coughs> it still needs another two or three minutes. Okay. And I will also add another little bit of salt to my potatoes as I think they need it. Not that much. Um, Deborah got a message. Uh, she said, thanks, things are blowing around and hitting our front door at our house. Oh God, oh. of our house. And now um, our other dog is upset. Oh my God, quite a storm. Oh, poor dogs. Are they in hiding? Obviously, <laughs> dogs and storms don't mix. One of them is. One of them's in my lap shaking, and the other one's hiding in the bathroom, trembling <laughs> and panting. I might as well talk. Everybody's up now. <laughs> oh, poor dogs. What dogs have you got? We have three. We, they're oh all mixed breed. They're all small mixed breeds. One's a Havanese Maltese. One's a Shih Tzu, Yorkie, and one's some kind of Havanese mix. Oh, my so God. Lovely. Oh, do they all get on well? Uh, pretty well. We have one that's uh, a little dominant. She's uh, She rules the roost. <laughs> <laughs> Is she the one that's not scared? No, actually, there's another one that's scared, and he's sleeping through it all. The oh. one got the one gets upset when it thunders or rains or looks like it might rain, and one gets very upset when there's other kind of noises. So she was barking, and uh, it's a mess here. <laughs> <laughs> so not easy to sleep through all this. <laughs> okay, in the moment, while we're waiting for this to uh, to cook, uh, to finish cooking. I'll start preparing the asparagus. Okay, so I'll just remove the, uh, the bottom. And uh, and then depending on depending how big or how small your asparagus are, if they are nice and small and tender, then you don't need to do much. But if they are um, quite big and hard, then you might want to, like I'm doing now, just peel um, some of the hardest bits at the bottom. Okay, so the smaller ones you can just you can just um, cook normally. So 
it's um, no, it takes a little preparation, but it's not it's not too bad. They actually peel quite easily with a potato peeler. You can see, say, if you've got small ones, then you can just put them in directly. No need of peeling. I've never heard of peeling asparagus before. Yeah, just the just the just the hard part. Um, you know, if you got big ones, it depends. You know, sometimes you get some nice, some nice really tender stems, and you can feel it with your fingers. You know, if the stem if the stem is quite hard, then it's um, by the time by the time the bottom is cooked, uh, the top will be overdone. You know, because the um, the the uh, these parmesan tips are very tender. So we don't want to um, we don't want to overdo overcook the asparagus the good part of it to, to make sure that the bad part of it is cooked. If you see what I mean. I had never done that either either, but it's a great idea. Yeah. And I love asparagus. It's such a such a lovely vegetable. Very very rich and and so so versatile. It can be can be used in so many different ways. We often we often eat it in with a risotto, asparagus risotto, and that way that way you don't have to peel it because what, what I tend to do when I do asparagus risotto, I cook I cook the um, um, I reserve the 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 tips and um, and I cook the hard part first and just put the tips at the end. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they hard because I cook them for longer. Um, but in this case, as we cook them all in one piece, we need to do this. <coughs> Deborah loves them too. She says the asparagus. Yeah, they're great. They really are. As you see, I mean, uh, you would have realized by now that most of the dishes I cook are, are actually quite, quite simple. And the Italian cuisine in general is very, very simple. And um, as I haven't uh, so far, I haven't really gone into um, cooking soups much, uh, but I wanted to share with you one that I'm think, I was thinking of doing for next week, which is a very, very famous um, um, Tuscan recipe oh, talk. Um, called, um, called Ribollita. Ribolita, which means basically boil twice, um, and uh, it's a it's a pretty much a peasant dish. But it's one of those those dishes that are so nice, so easy, so simple, but so rich. That it's um, that it's it's lovely, and um, it beats it beats minestrone every day of the week. Um, there's a lot also there's a lot more vegetables, and and it's not as is not as watery as minestrone. Um, I will I will go into I will go into it next week. It's the right season, Put isn't it, it for, for that? It's just it is, yes. warm and um, yeah, just keeps you warm and it sounds nice. Looking forward to the recipe, Maria says. Yeah, we actually had it we had it last night and I thought, oh why don't we and, and it's and it's lovely. Um, and we thought, well, why don't I do it for, oh. for one of the classes? Well, um, why not? It's, it's well received. Um, Hilary says that she loves making soups, and an Italian one will be will make a welcome change. Deborah says that sounds great. Carol and Steve, soup sounds good, and um, Catherine agrees with all of that as well. So it's mm -hmm. well received. It's more actually, it's more of a almost a stew more than a soup, um, but it's uh, it's really nice, and um, they had some of the traditional. Um, ingredients that will be using, you know, apart from the usual um, um, thing that we use to, to make sauces by like using carrots, celery, leeks, onions, and then be using savoy cabbage, uh, kale, or cavolo nero, the, you know, the black one, um, as opposed to the curly one. And Sue's looking forward to it. And Maria's got a question. Would you know how sure. to make parsnip and chestnut soup? Parsnip? I've never tried. It's simply because I have never seen uh, parsnip in my life until I came to England. So it's not something that I used to cooking with, although I like, I like parsnip and I like it, especially in roasts. Um, I haven't, uh, I haven't, um, no, I've never tried. I've got to be honest with you. Never tried. Uh, was that parsnip and what? And chestnut. 
and chestnut. No, I, I, I was looking for chestnuts yesterday, actually, because I, I wanted to make another really nice dish that I remember that my grandmother used to cook, which is uh, involtini, which is kind of like parcels made with the Savoy cabbage, chestnuts and chickpeas. And they're really, really nice. Um, but if I, can, I need to find some fresh chestnuts first. I didn't have them yesterday in Sainsbury's, but um, I, haven't, I haven't looked in other supermarkets. They, had them, they, they might still have them around because it's something that's traditional to have around Christmas. So they're not that far away from Christmas yet. Okay, almost done with the um, with these. So in a moment, I think we get these done when um, when the um, uh, tortilla is cooking. As again, we need to put in the pan and wait for a few minutes. So we've got something to do. But at least we've done the preparation now. All this um, asparagus are nice and peeled. There's nothing else left to, left to cut apart from a little bit of garlic. Okay. So I'm just going to get some garlic. A couple of messages, which are six, okay. okay. Um, I can't follow you with the camera when I'm reading the messages, but uh, roughly how many sticks of asparagus have you prepared? Um, I've got um, um, two bunches. Let me just get back to you so I can see you. Yeah. I'm not quite sure. If you want, I can weigh them for you, but I've bought two, uh, two bunches from the supermarket. I think they're about 200 grams each. But let me weigh them so at least we get an idea. But it, it doesn't really matter if you go a few more or a few less because... Um, it's not really a recipe where weight is, in, is, is that important. And we have another question, which is from Maria. Wendy said that she knows someone who can provide chestnuts from their garden at Xmas if you want them. Can they provide them now? I suppose I'll have to wait until next Christmas. Um, right. 460 grams here, yeah, so it's about, possibly it was like 500 grams when I bought them before we started chopping things off. What are they going to find out for you about the chestnuts? And um, Carol says can get very can get very good prepared chestnuts in packs if you don't need them fresh in skins. Prepared, sorry, you said- you said, you So said, obviously um, they're, they're in packs so the skin's been taken off. Already cooked, are they already cooked or? So kind of like, a, like, like that you uh, get? Yes, Luca, they are. Cooked, I think they're soft. I use them quite a lot. You can get whole ones. Okay. Right. And uh, right. you, you, which are quite good. I get them in a. We have a country store that's very good. It's a lot of natural foods as well. So they can come either in jars or packs. But I love chestnuts. So because I make pastry with chestnut and sage sometimes. Oh, so oh very nice. <laughs> very nice. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll I'll look for those. It's just something that came into my mind yesterday as I was in the supermarket. So I just looked there. Uh, but I haven't looked for, I didn't look them for them in, um, you know, in, in packs already cooked. I, I was just looking for the fresh ones. But um, yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind. I mean, I never, I never used them before, but I don't mind trying anything. Um, oh, uh, Catherine says that she's used them to make a chestnut and rosemary risotto. Chestnut, chestnut and rosemary. Oh, I haven't tried that actually. Oh, interesting. I might try chestnuts and rosemary. And, and I know chestnuts usually. Um, I have used to make um, other stuffings or something like in Boltini to do um, um, like small, small parcels. And they're nice because they provide um, some structure. Uh, so you can mix them with things that are more, they are more liquid and, um, and they provide a nice, a nice paste. Let me see if these are ready. Let's see what they look like. Mm. Mm. Okay, these are done. Okay, so just let them cool down for a second. 
And then what we do, we will mix them. In the meantime, I cleaned a couple of cloves of garlic that I will need with the, with the asparagus. Okay. <laughs> Whose dog, who's dog is that then? It's Deborah's, I think. Deborah's like, charm. Sorry, is it man? I've got two. <laughs> oh, <Sorry>. hello. <laughs> <Okay. Hi. laughs> <laughs> okay, let's mix. Let's make all of this. One's what? Past the house. <laughs> <laughs> and we can reuse we can reuse the same pan for cooking. So now we want to make sure they're all nicely combined and mixed. Sorry, sorry, Carol, would you mind muting uh, yourself? As it's, um, I mean, across. Okay. Butter. Okay. So, it's all nice and ready. Uh, what you might want to do before putting it, just give it a nice um, taste a little bit, just for um, for flavour. Deborah's saying it's not her dogs. They're all too scared, I think, by the sounds mm. of it. It was Carol's probably. Yeah. Okay, so this is nice. I like the I like the seasoning as well, so I don't need to add anything else. So what we do now? We add a little a little bit more olive oil. And I'll put it back on the. I'll let it warm up, and then we'll add. We'll add the whole mix. Oh, Carol! Carol says that it's not her dog; it's hers is a lot bigger. <laughs> Make a lot more noise. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. I love I love dogs, and then it's um, funny because when you. When you live with them, actually, you get to understand to understand their box. It's a bit like children. Before you are children, you don't realize, but then you get to understand the different cries that they have. You know, when they cry because they're angry, or when they're uncomfortable, or when they just want attention, or when they are in a tantrum. You know. And yeah. um, Carol says, "Sorry, Catherine, not Carol. Catherine says her um, cat is wondering where the barking is coming from." <laughs> it's quite funny. <laughs> Sorry, is it really loud? <laughs> it was, it was before, yes, <laughs> it was. Okay. Okay, so you want to make sure that um, it is nice and, um, uh, and liquid. You can see when, when the oil is warm, it goes a lot more, um, it's not as dense. So make sure that the old pan is coated. Okay, add a little bit more. We can add a mix. And we spread it to the old pan. It makes a nice surface. And try to make it even, because otherwise it won't, it, it won't cook evenly. It's, it's a little bit, as I said, the consistency, we're pretty much do, 
would be that of a homelet. Um, so make sure it's nicely spread all over. And I go and get the rest of the. There's a question from Hillary. Um, the rest of the. I think you said earlier, but which flour is best if you haven't got chickpea flour? I, I, I have always cooked this with chickpea flour since uh, since going uh, vegan, but uh, you can do it with um, a strong um, a strong bread flour as well. I would avoid using um, kind of like all-purpose flour, the one you use for, for, for cakes, but a bit too thin. But if you've got bread flour, that would do. I like using I like using chickpea flour because it's um, as a vegan, obviously it's one of the ways of getting your proteins as well. Right, Deborah would like you to repeat the tortilla ingredients. Yes, we basically got three potatoes, one onion, and so you cook the potatoes. Um, you cook the potatoes in. Uh, sorry, where my spoon? We cook the potatoes with a little bit of olive oil, and then we add the rosemary, uh, the onions and a few uh, sun-dried tomatoes okay and we let it cook until until all the ingredients are nice and soft okay so it normally takes 15 20 minutes um, once that is done uh, we cover them um, and i also added about three tablespoons of um, white wine vinegar simply to give it a little bit more flavor as simple as that um, then um, then we cover it and we let it cook for about 15 20 minutes when when it's all nice and soft we then uh, um, do the mix with uh, what about one glass one glass of flour whatever you use it I'll be, i'm using chickpea flour and about one glass of water and add a little bit of uh, salt and a little bit of uh, parmesan cheese then once it's all ready, we mix it all together and we put it back in the pan that, where we added a little bit more of olive oil. Um, so we let it cook now for a few minutes and then I will cover it again until it's, uh, until it's nicely cooked on the bottom and it's easy to separate and turn around, okay? So at the moment, I make sure that it's got like a nice, a nice compact, edge as well so it doesn't um, it doesn't fall out, fall apart when i turn it around okay so already separating a bit so it's quite good mm. it tastes nice already even <laughs> before it's good Okay, um, so I'll just let it go for another minute, and then I will get I will get my um, my lid and cook it again, covered for another for about five five minutes. So as I've got my okay, Deborah says, um, thanks for the recap. I had to get my husband up for reinforcement to deal with the dog. So. <laughs> Three are a lot of there's yeah, it's gonna say three dogs is a lot to cope with, isn't it? When they're scared. It is. <clears throat> okay. In the meantime, I can start dealing with the asparagus now. So it's very, asparagus is very simple. So in a pan, we get a nice a nice big pan like this. I put a little bit of olive oil. Again, maybe a couple of teaspoons. And we also, I'll be using also a um, chunk of uh, vegan butter. Okay, okay. so let me turn it on. Get this to warm up and melt, and then we'll add our asparagus. Okay, 
while that is melting, I will now um, turn the heat down a little bit on this one and cover it for about five minutes. And while that is happening, we can deal with the asparagus. So the ingredients we need for this, and I've got put some olive oil and butter in there. We will need a little bit of white wine. And uh, the only other ingredients are salt and pepper. So again, very simple. Oh, and, and our garlic, sorry. I forgot, I will put these in straight away. I put them up in one piece. I'll just crush them slightly. And I'll throw them in just to put some flavor into the, um, into the uh, uh, cooking oil and butter. See all the butter now is almost melted and it's starting to sizzle. Turn it down, I don't want it on a high heat here. I want it on a, on a gentle middle. Oh, What's happened? Um, you right? No, come out. Can you see if I just press something? Okay. Come on, it's not quite a big thing. Sorry, my fault of pressing buttons. I shouldn't be pressing. I don't know if you miss if you um, if we've gone off off uh, off screen for a minute. Yes, uh, we did. We did. Okay, good. I'm glad that we're back on. Um, so there's some. Uh, I say just a little bit of oil with the uh, with a couple of cloves of garlic to flavour the oil and butter. And now we're ready to put the. Um, Asparagus in. Okay. Should have maybe cut a few a little bit. I would like to reduce some. Otherwise, I'll struggle to put them on in the pan. Scissors? No, it's fine. So I want to make sure that they all get in uh, contact with the with the bottom of the pan, obviously, to cook. I should have measured them actually before. I didn't. Okay. These in the pan for a bit, add a little bit of salt. And a little bit of pepper. Very salty hands now. Okay. Okay, so that's all we need to do for about one minute. Like this to make sure that the if they're all like these ones are a little bit too many for this pan. So make sure that they're all got in contact and they're all like coated with um, with oil and butter. Then I will add the wine. So let me get my glass, sorry. Half a glass of wine will do. Throw it. 
let's evaporate for a minute. That's the alcohol, that's the alcohol evaporate. And then we are ready to ready to cover and let it cook for about 10 minutes. Push my hands again. Okay, we are now ready to turn the tortilla. You can see it now it's, it moves quite easily, so it should be easy to turn. I hope. Might be my dish. I need a small dish. Sorry. I need this size of dish which I, which I have used, so I need to wash it. So this is the way of turning the tortilla. Voila. I just had another drop of olive oil. Not very much. I'll put this back on. Deborah says it looks beautiful. Thank you, Deborah. So it's a very impressive, quite an impressive dish as well to serve to your friends. Okay. Maria says very yummy. So we just now gently slide it. And again, we will cover it for a few minutes, out of another five minutes, and that will be ready to be served. Okay. I thought this would make actually quite a nice dish and a nice combination to serve together. So they are two separate, completely separate dishes. But I think they will look quite good. They can look quite good one next um, next to each other. So the um, this is going to be ready uh, first. It will take uh, a few minutes longer for the asparagus uh, to be ready. As you can see, this is a very simple dish as well. So once we put the ingredients, we we gently um, cook them in the oil and uh, butter for, for two or three minutes. Then we add salt, pepper, and uh, uh, white wine, about half a glass of white wine. Then we cover it for about uh, 10 minutes or until the asparagus are tender. And then the last uh, two or three minutes, we then uncover it and cook it on an open flame just to, um, to reduce <coughs> some of the liquid, some of the wine that we put in. And so they just left into a um, the asparagus and a very uh, uh, just a little bit of uh, of juice uh, at the end. So I'll turn up the kitchen. Any any questions so far uh, while we're waiting for these two dishes to uh, to come to fruition? Um, Carol says different way of cooking asparagus. Never cooked it in wine before, and that she must try it. Yes, it's um it's um. It's, again, it's a very simple way uh, of cooking it, um, and it just adds a little bit to the flavour. It just enhances the flavour of the asparagus, which is such a gorgeous, such a gorgeous vegetable. Um, so they're just little tricks sometimes that can can improve, that can make something taste so different as well. Okay, while I waiting for that to happen, I'll get my um, my Chloe, serving dishes ready. There's a, a message from Chloe. Um, let me just get that up. 
Um, Claire wants to know how long you've cooked the, um, the asparagus for. In total, it would be about 15 minutes. That's what she thought, yeah. yeah. Um, another question from Deborah. Oh, no, was it? Oh no, Valerie, sorry. Um, did you use vegan parmigiana? Uh, she says she uses BioLife equivalent. Yes, yes, I did. Um, I use, I've thrown it away now, but um, yes, I use the BioLife, uh, what's called the uh, Proso Channel, which is uh, kind of like a good, uh, it's a good alternative to parmesan. And then um, Deborah says she's never cooked the asparagus in uh, white wine either, and she can't wait to try. That's from Deborah. <laughs> We just taste as well the sauce to see if we're okay for. Let's have a look at those. Are they looking? They're nice actually. The sauce is just, yeah, just enough salt. I don't need to add any more. And let me take a fork mm -hmm. out and see. They're almost, they're almost ready. They're just some of them are tender, some of them are still a little bit hot. So I just give you another few minutes. Okay, in a couple of in a couple of minutes this will be ready. So I'll make an executive decision in a couple of minutes when the asparagus will, would have been cooked enough as well, and we'll just give them a couple of minutes more without the lead. Okay. Okay, Deborah's asking um how long and what heat did you cook your tortilla on? You can have a look, maybe could you have the plane? Yeah. That's the flame. Okay, the tortilla cooked first of all about five minutes. But you had it higher in the beginning, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I had a little bit higher in the beginning. When I put the oil in, I cook it for about five minutes on an open uh, open pan. Then I cover it and I cook it for under five minutes. Then we turn it around and I put it on for another five, six minutes. Okay, so it's, uh, it's almost done now. So I can't wait to take this out as well. And it's nice, as you can say, it's now nice and um, it's not it's not stuck to the bottom of the pan at all, so it'll be easy to uh, easy to serve too. Okay, so one dish for the thing and one dish for the preparation. One dish will be for the old uh, tortilla, and one dish will be for um, the tortilla and asparagus together. Okay, I think it is. It's smelling quite good. Um, Sue says that hers stuck a bit to the pan. <coughs> Possibly, you just need to cook a little bit longer soon. Or, or you might not have uh, or, or, oil. Or your, your, your pan maybe is not as non stick as this one. I would just bought this yesterday, so <laughs> I can't, couldn't be. If it was non stick, I would be taking it back to the shop straight away. Um, but generally, it does. Um, if it if it is still sticky, it might be because it hasn't quite cooked for long enough. So that's why the first part we cook it first and cover it for about five minutes, and then cover it for another five minutes, and that um, and that improves improves the the ease of taking it out. Okay, the timer is on. So the tortilla is done now. Oh. That's the one thing. Let me take a picture. Okay, a couple of pictures of the tortilla. Now I'll let it cool down for a minute so it's easier, it's easier to cut. In the meantime, we can finish the asparagus. So as you can see now, the asparagus are nice and tender. So they're nice, they're cooked. Perfect, even the big ones are tender. 
Fantastic. You can see the amount of liquid. There isn't a lot, so. Okay. These okay. are done as well. Catherine says, yes, please, to a large slice. <laughs> And you have a little paste. Oh. Let's catch this nice light. Nice slice. Just grab the yes, some asparagus. generous portion of asparagus and we finish them off with a little bit of juice, juice left on the pan. Say so all the wine and oil and butter has gone now, there might be just a little bit left to create a little bit of a sauce. So let me just take a photo of this as well. And then we can, we can do our tasting. Carol says, looks delicious. We'll call in and get some asparagus on my way to feed my horses. Must see if I can try this tonight. Fantastic. Mm. Okay, let me take a photo of that. Oops. Deborah says it looks yummy. Another way that you can serve this as well, you can cut the tortilla in little squares and you can do like you do in the Spanish restaurants, uh, like in um, tapas, um, tapas bites. So let's have a taste now, Karina. Maria says looks really nice, yum yum. Voila. Oh. Voila. So, okay, let's have a nice. Looks delicious. Can't wait to try this. That's from Sue. Okay, so, the. Mm. Really nice, actually. Nice and. Um, I think I'll cut you a bit. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. There you go. And see the the experts. As um, Katrina was saying, a mum used to used to cook this quite regularly as well, so she can tell me if it's a, if it's okay today. It's very nice and moist and crunchy because you've got the crunchy top. And the asparagus as well. I love Lovely, it. Lovely, very very nice. Very nice. Would you like some of these as well? And uh, <clears throat> it's something that goes quite well, quite well together as well. So it's nice. Um, it's nice actually to because the the tortilla is quite dry, and the asparagus are nice and juicy. So 
it's kind of like nice to um, to have um, to have together. Um, got a question from Jen. We're not on this statement. Um, uh, with dried some tomatoes, dry or packed in oil. Um, so they're packed in oil, aren't they? We get the jars. Yes. Well, we the ones we use are the ones like these. They are um, they're kept in in in, in oil. Um, mm. If you are lucky enough to find, find the posh ones, they're in olive oil. They're better, but these ones are in uh, uh, vegetable oil. Um, but yeah, but I, I tend to use the ones that are in olive oil rather than the ones that just dry because those you need to you need to rehydrate really uh, because otherwise it's just too dry. Or use them for cooking like this. They're okay when you use the dry ones to cook them in sauces because obviously while you cook them they rehydrate. But as here there is no there is no juice in the pan, so it would be it would be too dry. Valerie says it looks delicious and, and says thank you and. Um... It was her dogs that were doing the barking. They're rescue dogs. And um, she said, sorry, she'll mute herself next time. That's fine, no worries, no worries. It just said. Uh... It must probably smell this cooking. Mm. Actually, I like the, addi the, the addition of the sun-dried tomatoes because, as I said, and, and parmesan, because I think it adds, um, adds a bit of flavor to the to this. Um, because although it, it's nice, it's nice to watch. Sometimes I find this when I go to Spanish restaurants a bit, a bit too bland. Um, and um, adding the addition of onions, sun-dried tomatoes, a little bit of vinegar, and the also um, fresh um, um, rosemary, it really adds a, a little bit of um, of kick to to the dish. So we're finding out about all the dogs today. Deborah's um, dogs are rescue dogs as well, which is lovely. Um, so that's why that's how that's how we got most of our dogs when we were in Italy, because my grandmother used to live in the countryside. Um, we hardly ever had a dog that was bought. It always like tended to appear out of nowhere, and she was too too soft to uh, chase them away. So they ended up, we ended up with uh, sometimes a nice, you know, sometimes it was one dog, sometimes it was four or five, but they all had, they all had, um, you know, something to eat and there was a lot of room to roam around and, you know, and run around in the, in the, in, in the forest. So the last one you had was, um, they all enjoyed. Is it a hook? No. Hook. A hook. She called him Hook. Yeah. She? Hook. We call the Hook like mm. uh, Captain Hook, uh, but she obviously, she couldn't pronounce English, so she called it Hook. Okay, actually, when she used to call it okay. And she, he was really big, but when she went to hospital and she wasn't very well, he used to jump up, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. He said, obviously, the dogs in, 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 in their house always used to sleep outside. Um, and um, the first thing, uh, this is, was kind of like a big dog, really, really big. You know, it was, was about more than, it was, it was about this tall and quite, quite large as well. So quite a big dog. And um, every morning when she went downstairs to, you know, to feed him, whatever, she used to say good morning, that by jumping up to her and put, it, put his paws on his, on his shoulders. And then when my grandmother went to the hospital, and she had some, some heart problems and came back and was obviously quite a bit weaker than when she, than when she left, he, he, he sensed it straight, up, <laughs> straight away and he didn't jump up to her anymore because she couldn't have, she couldn't have handled it. But he knew, he knew straight away, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how they the things they pick up. Catherine's having to go and says thank you, Luca. See you next week. Okay, yeah. you're very welcome, Catherine, and I look forward to seeing you next week. We just got um, my. Uh, this is Carol. My dog, cats, and ponies are all rescues. That's that's amazing. Oh, and Deborah yeah. says, I think your rabbits weigh more than our dogs. I think they do actually. <laughs> <laughs> They're massive. <laughs> They're about. I think the big one, mm. chocolate, is it's about four four kilos. It's four kilos. Yeah. Four kilos. So quite quite a sizable quite yeah. a sizable rabbit and. Uh, uh, raising, raising is a little bit less, about 3.6. They yeah. both look equally as big. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny, it's, uh, the, the funniest thing is that you see them and you, they look at them quite kind of like this size, but then when they want food and they get, they go on the, on the back paws and they, they come up to you, they look so long. <laughs> and the more, the, the, the hungrier they are, the, the longer they become <laughs> to reach the food. <laughs> oh, 
Valerie says, um, I brought mine back from when I lived in North Cyprus, a Cyprus Terrier who was a street puppy and the big one, a pointer, cross Cyprus Terrier. And she took them home from the rescue where, where she was, oh, where she volunteered. <clears throat> oh, fantastic. Oh, that's amazing. Deborah so says she loves rabbits. Did they, have to, did they have to quarantine when they came to, um, to, <clears throat> to England, uh, Valerie? Sorry, I put it on mute because they've been having a maddie around the house while I've been watching. <laughs> Quiet for the moment. Um, they, they had to have their um, rabies, but I did that from when I got them. I was there over three years. Yeah. But they didn't need to quarantine. Uh... Oh, that's good. That's good because it would have been quite upsetting otherwise for them to be... I always mm -hmm. feel that, although they, they, they get to get home at the end, but I always feel... Sorry for them, but they don't know what's going on, and, and mm -hmm. just left there for you know for several weeks, and it's not it's not nice for them. We had an Alsatian just very quickly that um, when we went on holiday, we put him into the kennels, and apparently he didn't stop barking from the moment he arrived to the moment he he um, we went to pick him up. And when we went to pick him up, he was all excited to see us, and then he thought again. And as he came out of the kennel, he turned his nose up at us and started sulking for about two days because he's like, you've deserted me, you've left me there, how dare you? So they're very sensitive, <laughs> aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Anyway, have we got any, any questions uh, um, regarding what we've done today or anything else before, before we end uh, today's meeting? No, that was great. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope you've um, um, you'll be able to follow and to do it in your own um, in your own home. And um, let me know how it went. And um, if you can uh, put um, put a, a picture on Facebook, that would be nice. It's always nice to see what somebody thank else has put. Yeah. Okay. Carol says thank you. Yeah, Maria's looking forward to cooking this, and Hilary says thank you once again. Okay, now thank you all. Um, I've enjoyed this as usual, and I'll see you again next week. And Sue says thank you too. Wow. So, okay. Thank Bye. you, loved it. Bye. That's from Chloe. Oh, oh wonderful, thank wonderful. Thank you. Um, no. There we go.